Good morning. My name is Catherine Conroy, and I'm the senior warden at St. Anne's. I welcome you to this service of morning prayer. Our rector, Father John, and his family have had a significant COVID exposure, so they are quarantining for a few days. Keep us all safe. You can't hear me. That's the microphone. That's okay. But thanks to the technology wizards, we have Father John's sermon that he preached from his home. And those of us in person will be able to see it on the TV screen. And those of you who are worshiping online, it should be all seamless. We also have a very special musical treat today. Our sweet, wonderful Rachel's sister, Rebecca, is here. And the sisters will be playing two duets. So again, I welcome you to the service of morning prayer. Still your heart, quiet your mind, and let us worship our Lord. Is risen. Lord is risen indeed. Christ has entered not into a sanctuary made with hands, a copy of the true one, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God on our behalf. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to set forth his praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and for our salvation. And so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and in mind to worship him, let us kneel in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done 
and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins for our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. Christ the Lord has ascended into heaven. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. Let us say the Venite in unison. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with his thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with songs. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ the Lord has ascended into heaven. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. psalm today is psalm 97 let us read it responsibly by the whole verse the lord is king let the earth rejoice let the multitude of the isles be glad a fire goes before him and burns up his enemies on every side The mountains melt like wax at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the Lord of the whole earth. The heavens declare his righteousness, and all the people see his glory. Confounded be all who worship carved images and delight in false gods. Bow down before him, all you gods. For you are the Lord, most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. Light has sprung up for the righteous, and joyful gladness for those who are true hearted. Glory to God, the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And now for the lessons. Please be seated. A reading from Acts of the Apostles. With Paul and Silas, we came to Philippi in Macedonia, a Roman colony, and as we were going to the place of prayer, we met a slave girl who had a spirit of divination and brought her owners a great deal of money by fortune telling. While she followed Paul and us, she would cry out, These men are slaves of the Most High God who proclaim to you a way of salvation. She kept doing this for many days. But, but Paul, very much annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, 
I order you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out that very hour. But when her owners saw that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace before the authorities. When they had brought them before the magistrates, they said, These men are disturbing our city. They are Jews and are advocating customs that are not lawful for us as Romans to adopt or observe. The crowd joined in attacking them, and the magistrates had them stripped of their clothing and ordered them to be beaten with rods. After they had given them a severe flogging, they threw them into prison and ordered the jailer to keep them securely. Following these instructions, he put them in the innermost cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was an earthquake, so violent that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were unfastened. When the jailer woke up and saw the prison doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself since he, was suppo since he supposed that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted in a loud voice, Do not harm yourself, for we are all here. The jailer called for lights, and rushing in, he fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them outside and said, Sirs, what's my, what must I do to be saved? They answered, Believe on the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. They spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. At the same hour of the night, he took them and washed their wounds. Then he and his entire family were baptized without delay. He brought them up into the house and set food before them, and he and his entire household rejoiced that he had become a believer in God. The word of the Lord. Be we will now read the Te Deum Laudamus in unison. You are God, we praise you. You are the Lord, we acclaim you. You are the Eternal Father. All creation worships you. You, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim, sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you did not shun the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Revelation. See, I am coming soon. My reward is with me to repay according to everyone's work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes so that they will have the right to the tree of life and may enter the city by the gates. Outside are the dogs and sorcerers and fornicators and murderers and idolaters and everyone who loves and practices falsehood. It is I, Jesus, who sent my angel to you with this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the descendant of David, the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say, come. And let everyone who hears say, Come. And let everyone who is thirsty come. Let anyone who wishes to take the water of life as a gift, 
I warn everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book, if anyone adds to them, God will add to that person the plagues described in this book. If anyone takes away from the words of the book of the, this prophecy, God will take away that person's share in the tree of life and in the holy city, which are described in this book. The one who testifies to these things says, Surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with all saints. Amen. The word of the Lord. Be to God. We will now read the Benedictus Dominus Deus in unison. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen.
from the Gospel according to St. John. Jesus prayed for his disciples, and then he said, I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one. As you, Father, are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given them, so that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may become completely one, so that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I desire that those also whom you have given me may be with me when I, where I am, to see my glory which you have given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world does not know you, but I know you, and these know that you have sent me. I made your name known to them, and I will make it known so that the love which you have loved me may be in them, and I in them. The word of the Lord. the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. Lord, keep this nation under your care. Let your way be known upon earth. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Create in us clean hearts, O God. The collect of the day. O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless, but send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. colleague for Sundays. O oh God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you, that the week to come may be spent in your favor through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A collect for peace. O oh God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life, and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And a collect for mission. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you. Through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And a prayer for Uvalde. O Holy Spirit, be present with the heartbroken people of Uvalde, especially the parents, children, teachers, and staff of Robb Elementary School as they mourn the loss of 21 precious souls. Wrap your arms around them in love. Give them courage, give them strength. And we ask all this in Christ's name. Amen.
warmest greetings and blessings, friends, on this seventh Sunday in Easter. It's the seventh Sunday of Easter, the Sunday after the Ascension, and our last Sunday in this season as we prepare to turn our gaze to Pentecost and the season after Pentecost next week and in the coming weeks. I'm sorry I can't be with you all this morning. As I think many of you have heard by now, Anna was exposed to COVID, and as she's too young to mask and too young to be vaccinated, we determined that it would probably be safest for me to stay home to protect us, but also to protect you all. But rest assured, we're joining everyone online this morning, and through the advent of this wonderful technology, I'm still able to offer my homily and my reflection on our readings for this morning to you today. So thank you. Thank you for being here, and thank you for continuing to pray for us in the coming days and weeks ahead. Before Anna had her exposure experience this past week, I had an opportunity to get together with some colleagues for lunch, and as we hadn't had an opportunity to be together for some time, we decided to treat ourselves to a little bit fancier of a meal than we would typically take. And as I arrived, I was greeted with jocular laughs and wry smiles. Apparently, there had been a debate amongst my colleagues as to whether or not I was going to show up to this fancy restaurant wearing my cowboy boots, my ubiquitous cowboy boots. I hadn't realized that they were so much a part of my identity until that moment, and I know some of you have commented on them as well. And I have to be fair and have to admit, I don't mind the fact that this is a connection point or a part of how people identify me. I readily embrace it. I actually have a photo uh, from some number of years ago. I was probably around Anna's age, if not just a tad bit older, where I'm standing in my grandfather's cowboy boots. He's having to sort of hold me in them because they swallow me up. It's a part of my background and my identity. It connects me to where I come from and where my people come from. One of those places being Texas, where my dad is from. And it's with great heart and emotional strength that I feel connected to Texas in most days, but especially this week, as we have encountered yet another tragedy. As I'm sure many of you have heard by now as well, there was yet another school shooting, the 27th school shooting this year alone in Uvalde, Texas, in which a number of students and teachers were killed. And this one, this one's even more personal for me because my cousin-in-law, Katie, used to substitute teach at that school. And her nieces still attend that school. Thanks be to God, they were not there on the day of the shooting. And my extended family is safe. But how untrue that is for so many others who are now facing life ahead, trying to face the sorrow, the pain, the suffering, trying to figure out what to do. And we, I think we as a society, too, look yet again upon this devastation and wonder what it is that we are to do, how it is that we are to be, and where it is that we go from here. There aren't easy answers, but we are still called to work, to pray, to discern ever more clearly what it is that God would have us to do, and how it is that we are to respond in these periods of great suffering and tragedy. And I think, interestingly, that our lectionary readings this morning offer an insight and a truth for us as to how it is that we are to respond, even when it is a very complex situation, one that is fraught with challenges and divisions and polarities in which people have extreme positions on either side. What do we do 
And how are we called to respond as Christians? Well, first, first we hear the admonition in our gospel from St. John today. In this prayer, Jesus is calling us to be one as he and the Father are one. The glory that you have given me, I have given them, Jesus says, so that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may become completely one, so that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Our call above all else, our call as Christians is to seek that oneness. And that oneness is in community. The truth of our God is community. God is triune, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In God's very nature, God is community. So for us to be one is not to flatten our myriad diversities and uniquenesses, but to find the ways in which we can live together in those differences, to be truly a community unified in love. But that too, for all of us, no matter our location, requires work. It requires us to be transformed, to give up things that we may hold precious and dear, things that we may feel very strongly about, and yet, in service and in love to one another, we have to give up and move beyond. And in that regard, I think we hear another truth in that call to unity. One of the, the great tenets of our national identity, a deep-rooted sentiment that goes all the way back to the founding of our nation, is this sense of individualism, of individual liberty, of individual freedom, of individual choice. And we hear, we hear that truth and that value communicated across the generations of American thought and philosophical musings and writings and political discourse even today on both sides of the political spectrum, our most contentious issues often relate to individual freedom and choice and individual liberty. But as Christians, that is not the greatest good. Nowhere in scripture are we taught that the greatest good is individual freedom. What we are taught is that the greatest good is service, is dedication to one another, and through that dedication and service and sacrifice for one another, a dedication and service and sacrifice to God. Our greatest call is to community. And so often when tragedies like this arise and these debates arise, around rights, around freedoms, around liberties. We have to remember our call as Christians. What is it that we are called to place first and prioritize first? And the truth is, when we listen closely to the gospel, that we are called to put others before ourselves. We are called to put community above individualism. We are called to put God above all else. And we hear that message too, in a way, in a reading from Revelation. Now, one of the interesting dynamics of our reading from Revelation today is that the lectionary actually excerpts three verses from the overall length of the passage it excerpts out verses 15 and then 18 and 19. But 
if we go back and we actually look, and I've included those verses in the reading that you heard today, but if we go back and look at verses 18 and 19, we hear this. I warn everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book, if anyone adds to them, God will add to that person the plagues described in this book. If anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God will take away that person's share of the tree of life in the holy city, which are described in this book. And I bring that up because Ironically, like I said, it was cut out almost in violation of what's said in those verses from the lectionary reading as a whole. But I also think it's instructive for us in terms of how we think about our faith. So often, and this is true for many of us on all sides of the different theological and political spectrums, hear what we want to hear and look for what we want to see in Holy Scripture. We sort of cherry pick the parts of Scripture that best fit the narratives that we have in our minds and in our hearts and the ways that we want God to be in this world. But we have to take Scripture fully. We have to hear Scripture in its totality. And when we do that, none of us are left unchanged. Every single one of us are transformed and called into something beyond ourselves, beyond our own desires and proclivities. We are called into a new space, into a new community, into a new reality. And when we confront challenges like the tragedy, that befell us this week, as we confront the sufferings, the turmoils seen around the world, it can be so easy to immediately jump to the conclusions and the thoughts and the feelings that we have already determined to be right, to jump to our own righteousness, instead of to step back to listen, to hear what scripture says, to hear the words of those who are in pain, who are suffering, the witness that they bear to the realities of brokenness in this world. And to know at the end what it is that God is calling us into, that place, that space, that community, that is beyond all of our individual desires, individual thoughts, individual solutions. We are called to something more and something greater. You know, I started this reflection, this homily, talking about my own emotional connection to Texas. And I think one of the parts of that background that has so captured my imagination over the years is the ruggedness, the sense of accomplishment, of overcoming a personal triumph in the land that is so inhospitable. But we live in a world that is inhospitable, and we cannot traverse it alone. No matter what our national narratives tell us, no matter how formed and shaped we are by this sense of individualism, we cannot do this alone. When we confront the horrors of this world, we are reminded anew that ultimately our reliance is upon God and upon community as we are called into a community together, a community shaped and formed by God, and a community that discerns God's will. We are called to something beyond ourselves, to something more, to something greater. And that today, friends, is what we need to hear. The pains and the sufferings of this world are myriad, but the way 
that we confront them. The way that we comfort each other within them is through community. And the truth of a greater reality beyond the pain that we see now is the truth of community, the truth of unity, the truth of being one as Jesus and the Father are one. So that the love of God may be our love and that we may know fully God's reality in this world. Thank you, friends, for being a part of that community in this place, in this place of St. Anne's. And pray, pray that our community will be one, that we will ever more fully and clearly understand God's will for us, and that we may reach out to the world that is so broken and to offer love, offer compassion, but offer the truth, the truth of wholeness that is found in community and unity, and the truth that at the end of all of this hopelessness is love, is hope anew, is ultimately unity. Blessings, friends, this day and always. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Please remain seated for some announcements. ROSA is the Women of St. Anne's very busy this week. There will be a trade-in party on Friday night from 7 to 9 in the parish hall. If you're a woman and you come to St. Anne's, you're part of this group. Uh, bring an item like a white elephant, something you no longer want, to trade. And we'll pull them all around. There'll be a fun way to do it. Um, and you get to take something fun home. Bring a friend. Snacks and drinks will be provided, and if you have questions, see Lynn Fleming, who is in the back of the church, and she will raise her hand, or Pam Brewer, who's not here today. Oh, no, there we are, Pam. I'm sorry. Pam's there. And Willis is also having a yard sale on June 11th and 12th. Uh, you may bring your items starting next Sunday, June 5th, and then throughout the week there'll be somebody here. Uh, you can see the newsletter that was sent on Friday for the specific times. Um, and Lynn is also putting up a sign-up sheet for people to sign up to help. Um, if you have questions, ask Peggy Owens or Mary Casey. Peggy's here. <laughs> so we have so much going on. Next Sunday is Pentecost, and what does that mean? Wear red. Wear red. Very good. I'm impressed. Wear red. Put it on your calendar, remember it, wear red. Because you'll feel really silly if everybody else has red on you, you don't. Um, and then the week after that is June 12th, which is graduation Sunday, and we have three graduates, high school graduates this year, Erin Cherian, Brendan DeLauder, and Julia Yankovic. And we'll have a special celebration for them, and we will honor their accomplishments and wish them the best for their future. So with that, let us kneel for the final prayers. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. 
and the prayer of St. Chrysostom, let's say it together. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you, and you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world the knowledge of your truth in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. 